Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. I know that this is going to be a weird start, but I was half asleep while I recorded this video, and I'm a little all over the place. You'll notice I slur words when I don't mean to or need to, um, and there will just be times where just something I say doesn't make a little bit of sense, but this tutorial should still be easily follow able to be followed, and as always, I hope you guys do enjoy, and I'll see you at the end of the video. Welcome guys to this tutorial where I teach you how to make a simple 2D abstract header in Photoshop. Alright, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go with a purplish, kind of like their team colors. We're going to go ahead and use this color. Now, I like to sometimes get uh, circles going and this just to keep track of my colors. Um, you want, for something like this, you're gonna want like a bright, a really bright version of the said color you're wanting to bake your main, and then you want a medium, and then you want a dark. That's how I usually do it. And we've got our first color here. And I press X to swap it so I can just uh, fill that color as that. We're gonna get the medium one. And let's go a little darker. All right, we got the medium. And now let's get the really dark one. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna go with one more, which is basically just gonna be super dark. Cause that's gonna be our complete background color. And then let's actually set up a white one with white okay let's set up just basically a white one now I'm gonna just group these together and I'm gonna call this colors I'm just gonna move it over to the side for now all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go our background right now Double click here so we can get this out. And we're gonna go with this color. Right here we got our main background. And then we're gonna start with the first layer. And it's gonna go, we're gonna get the pen tool, which you can get it really easily by pressing the letter P or, and if you don't mess up like I did, if you hold control and select this, you can move this around a bit. And if you hold alt, you can change this direction. Um, it doesn't really matter, but just for this, I'll go ahead and do it that way. And if it, if you click and it doesn't do anything, basically click on the last point you made and then it'll keep on working, which is fine. And now we're going to select this, the main color. And this is going to be our lighter one. So it's going to be that color, and then we're going to press shape, basically to make that be there. Basically we're going to click on the bottom layer, and then you can click here for a new, new layer. It just makes it a hundred times easier in my opinion. So now we select that layer, press P for our pen tool again. I'm going to go inside this one a bit. Drag it, let go. Uh, just just for ease of use and then hold control again and basically just move the point to where you get it to where you want it I like look at that but I don't like how it just immediately started so now we're gonna come over here and this one's gonna be our second darkest Wait, why did I do that All right, then we got that one going. And we're gonna do our last one on this side. And if you, I just don't like it going 
Because if I would have just left this here and I wanted to go like this, it would have just made it really weird. It doesn't really affect it at all. It just bugs me a bit. Just personal preference. Alright. Now we need to get the darkest one in shape. Now we got this little effect here. See, and there's multiple ways you can do this next step. You can do a different look on the other side, or you can just keep it like this. I personally like to just select them all by clicking the bottom one, holding shift, and clicking the one on top. And then you're gonna do Control and J, and it duplicates it. Then you do Control T, and you have them all in transform. Right click, and you're gonna do flip horizontal, and just bring it over. And it looks like a complete duplicate, and I don't really like that, so what I do is I do flip vertical at this point, and basically readjust it. And then we get this. And if I put it on screen and I get rid of this and this, there we get the effect we do right now. And I like to do the shading for it all absolutely last, but let's do some organization here. Let's highlight the bottom ones and we're gonna do control G for group. And we're going to rename it, I call it left. And do the same for the ones on the right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the sore logo. I already have it in my assets. These basically when I download an image off Google to use, if I will usually put it in here or if I delete the background, sometimes I'll save it and I'll put it in my assets folder. Um, but since it's a team logo I need, here it is. Basically I like having it on my own personal computer. It's just easier to get a hold of. And as you can see, we got the logo in here now. And Yes, purple is part of the color scheme, but it just stands in too much. It doesn't stand out. And you want the logo to stand out. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click on it. I'm going to go to color overlay. And we're going to change it to white. And we'll mess with it a bit here in a minute to give it a cool little effect. So at the moment, we've got this. And we're going to add in our shading. We're gonna start with the left side, and then basically because I like doing duplicates, what I can do is I can just go ahead and do the left side, and then I can copy it over to the right, but this, just copy the group over. Okay, but what we wanna do is we wanna start with the top one. And we're gonna make a new layer above it, and then we right click on it, and do create clipping mask. And we wanna come over here to our brush, our brush colors and we're going to set it to straight black press b for our brush tool and if you hold alt you'll see how it pulls up the color picker now you can pick the colors and everything with this for your brush but we don't want to do that we want to hold alt and hold right click and then you'll get this and you can adjust the size and hardness with your mouse um, what we're going to do is we're going to set it to 100% uh, hardness and for this we're going to set it to about 258 pixels and we're basically going to just click and drag all along the edge here it doesn't have to be perfect then we're going to come over here to our fill I always like to adjust the fill no matter what set it to like 98 I'm going to drag the opacity down to I like how it looks at 42. Let's see, actually. I'm gonna go with 65% is what I like on that one. And we're gonna just copy this right here on the next one. And you can see I made a bit of a mistake here. You can just go back over it. And then we're gonna do the same thing, 97. It doesn't have to be perfect. Go to where you like how it looks. 
I like the look of 49. And we're going to, now for the top one, we want to give it a, a depth effect with the shading. We're going to do the same clipping mask, but this time we're going to hold alt and go to really big brush size. And we're going to hold alt again and we're going to scroll wheel backwards to zoom out. And then I'm just going to go like this. As you can see, it's really dark, but that's, that's nothing at all which is going to lower the opacity for this I'm going to go a bit lower and then adjust it to where I like it I like 43 and as you can see we've got a nice effect here and they look similar to color which I like but there's you can tell they're different slightly and then what I like to do instead of doing all that process over again is I'm going to minimize it again. I'm gonna hold Alt, and I'm gonna click and drag up, and then it'll have a copy. Control T, and then I'm just going to horizontal and vertical again, and I'm basically just going to attempt to get it kind of close like that, and then I'm just going to hide that real fast. And you can tell it's off, so. Now sometimes it'll be, as you can see, the shadows are off. And just to make it easier, I'm going to hold Alt and make it a bit bigger. And there we go. Let's actually bring it in a little bit more. No, oh, yeah. Okay. Then we got our effect there. Our sore logo is centered and now what we need to do is, as you can tell it's kind of blends in a little bit here too much in the background so what we're gonna do actually first we need to delete the right we're just gonna rename this right I'm gonna go on to our bottom layer you don't have to create a clipping mask for this since it is the bottom layer we're gonna lower down the size again uh, to about 428 and we're just gonna do the same process we did with the others. Except this time we can just do it all in the same layer. All right, then we're gonna lower the opacities like we did before. As you can see, it gives it a nice, de nice depth effect. And just for shits and giggles, I'm going to add a bit more of a depth effect by creating a new layer. I'm going to put it above the other one. I'm going to make the brush bigger, and then I'm going to just go like this. I'm going to do the same thing again. And then it gives it a bit more of a depth effect. And we got our sides, and we got our background. Now what I want to do is I want to mess with the sore look because obviously that's too bland, it's not got any effects on it and everything else. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring, we're going to go back onto it and because it has the color overlay, it's not going to show anything if I make a clipping mask, I can't change it. But if I hide the color overlay, it's there. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the sore logo. We're going to do rasterize layer style. And as you can see, now we can edit it. Oh, <laughs> I deleted the wrong thing. Now we can edit the clipping mask and it changes it. What we're going to do for now, delete that clipping mask. And we're going to go back to it, right click, convert it back to a smart object. And then we're going to do another clipping mask. I'm going to lower down the size of the brush, and I like to just make a little bit of a, like this, and lower the opacity. I'm going to go about 18. I'm actually going to bring out the eraser tool with E, and adjust the brush size the same way. And then it's slight, it's not very noticeable, but you can tell the difference there. I'm actually going to bring it up to 29. And then 
as you can tell, it still stands out a little too much. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go back to our bottom layer. I'm going to create a new one on top of all those. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just lower down to about there. I'm going to make a dot. doesn't matter where. I'm going to do Control T. Then I'm going to do Control H to put my guides back up. And I'm going to just hold Alt to drag the size to where I like it. And then we're going to do the same thing with the fill and opacity. And there we go. We have that. But as you can tell, it's too round. And I don't really like how that looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt and I'm going to go... I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. My bad. I'm going to stretch it out like this. And then bring it down a little bit. And there we go. We got our... It, looks a bit more belonging now and what I like to do is I've found out this cool effect before a long time ago that I really like doing in small simple stuff like this sometimes I'm gonna make a droplet effect and it's really easy to do it looks cool in certain places and it just works out pretty well now how we're gonna do that is we're gonna go up top I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to get the circle tool. If this isn't showing up, how you get is you right click on it and it'll be a rectangle tool probably. And then you're going to go down to ellipse tool. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click and drag holding shift to make it a perfect circle. And go about to there. And we're going to want to make it. Um, let's go with this color. Then we're going to hold alt and we're going to click on it and then we're going to hold shift and drag down to about here, control T and then you're going to hold alt and shift after you click and we've got our size there. Now if you wanted to know how I zoom in, I hold alt and then I scroll in with the scroll wheel, scroll up and then we're just going to scoot it in a bit. I get a little bit smaller actually, about that size. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in between the two on, we're gonna go to the bottom one then. We're gonna create a new layer. And we're gonna get the pen tool out. And go from about here on there, zoom back out to about here and we're gonna just Hold shift and drag, and then we're going to click about here on this. Now let's go about here. No, I don't like how that looks either. Out there. Okay. Oops, didn't need to right click. And then we're basically just going to do the same thing over to here. If you want to know how to make a straight line like I did, just hold shift and then click. Then we're going to come back over. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Ooh, don't do that. Whoa. <laughs> I kind of uh, messed up there. But, uh. Oh, that's why. I need to go to here. Then do it. I was wondering why it didn't look, too, look right. Alright. And then we're gonna just scroll up here, about there, nope. Yeah. Oh, I guess it's not as good as the other one because direct line doesn't lead to the other one. It's a little bit low, but it'll work. Now what we do is we've made our middle portion and get the droplet out. And we're going to select that, we hit okay, and hit shape. As you can see, it gives it a cool little droplet effect, but we have to add our shading. But first we need to merge all these into one layer. What we're going to do is we're going to click the bottom one, hold shift, click to the top one, and it highlights them all. Then we're going to do merge shapes, and it's all one shape. And it didn't mess with the anything besides putting them all to one size. Sometimes it'll mess up and it will leave 
gaps in places, but at that if that happens, what you I'll show you what happened, what to do if that happens. If that happens, what you'll do is you'll end up doing Control Z to undo the effect that you did that glitched it out. You're gonna right click, we'll do the first, rasterize layers. Then you do merge layers, and then you always, in my perf in my opinion, you always want to make it smart off it. And then after smart object, we need to create a new layer, do a clipping mask again. I'm going to get out the black for our brush tool. Press B, do the same alt and drag trick. I'm just going to go a little bit here on the sides. Two clicks there, two clicks there. I'm going to lower down the opacities like that. And yeah, that looks a bit better, but we're not anywhere near done. A quick trick, so you don't end up having to do clipping mask over and over again, is you can click on the layer that the clipping mask from the previous one was on, hit new layer, and it automatically does the clipping mask for you. And if you want it to be needed or want it to be on top, you can always just drag it on top of the other one, and it'll still keep its property. Now what we need to do is we're going to edit this black add add this bottom piece my bad and we're going to it doesn't matter how really dark it is at the moment because at this point we're going to end up messing with the opacity as well kind of make it blend in with the other one and as you can see gives it a bit better effect there and we're going to do another one like I said how would I do it before and it seems like our light is just directly above, but the location of this is going to make it be like this. Okay. And then we're going to just lower the shading a bit. And we got our little bit of a droplet effect done. And, but as you can see, it made this other one a bit darker than I wanted it to be, so I'm going to use the eraser tool and just erase a little bit of the layer from this side. And there we go. Actually, we're going to edit this a bit more, because as you can see, this just is too bright right there. So I'm going to get out the brush tool again. And then... And we're just going to go a little bit farther out just because of the fact of how it's uh, yeah, the location of it. And as you can see, it kind of does stand out because it doesn't create a shadow. We're going to change that in a second, but we're going to make this a group and highlight them all. And then control G again. I'm going to call this droplet. And I'm going to do control T, move it to where I want it. I'm going to put it about here. I'm going to tilt it a little bit, actually. And as you can see, it doesn't look right. So I'm going to actually just tilt that back. Try to get it. Yeah. Bring this back over here. And if it was my personal, if it was an actual header, not a tutorial header, I'd put a lot more time into it. But because it is a tutorial header it's I'm just going to show you how to do it the right way but I'm not going to spend time on orientation and everything a huge a lot so basically we're gonna go back to the bottom one because of where it is and we're gonna make one droplet about that size for the bottom make it a little bit bigger for the second one then double click and triple click then we're gonna mess with the opacity again And if you want to like give it the effect that it's oozing just from the wall in random places, what you can do is you can actually highlight this one here. Then if you hold control, you can highlight the droplet. And you can actually do control J, I think it works. Yeah, it'll end up bringing the other one up top, but that's okay. We can just fix it in a minute. 
and we'll just put a couple of these alternating sizes and alternating sizes in random places. Put a really big one right here. Because why not? Okay, and this one, and because it's a bit bigger size, we're going to make it have a more intense shadow. So it's, and it wouldn't have a shadow on top of it, so what we're going to do is, because these are, alright, basically you can see what it did with that first one. Now, and as you can tell, the, the logo to me a little bit looks a little bit too bland. What I like to do in the when it's like that is I'll double click on it, and then I'm going to go to pattern overlay. Now, obviously, um, no, let's see what this pattern looks like when I lower the opacity a bit. And I don't like it. Yeah. Actually, no, I don't like that one. So what we're gonna do. It is. What does clouds look like? No. Basically, just mess around with uh, with it a bit until you see what you like. Uh, I kind of like how that looks. I'm gonna lie. We'll go with it. If you zoom in, you can see it, but other than that, it's not too obvious, and it gives it a little bit of effect. And looks like we're good there, so I'm going to do the same rasterize layer style and then convert to smart object. Then it looks like we're good there. Um, I'm not going to deal with the putting the sponsors in or anything like that. Now we're going to move on to the actual color correction. And at this point, what I like to do is I'll highlight the top one. I hold shift to highlight the bottom one and I create a group and I call it all. This is just so it's all in one place. And at this point, this is when I'm working on the color correction. I made that shadow a little too harsh, but I'm not going to mess with it right now. So what I'm going to do is I like to turn on my guides and I forgot to mention, if you want to know how to do this, I will show you right now these blue lines. What you do is you're going to press V, but you need to make sure the rulers are, rulers are out. And if you don't know how to do that, it's control R to hide them and make them show up. You just go over to your ruler and then you click on it and drag away and you've got a guide. And it works the same way with both. And you highlight, you can make it mark your center points and everything else. So that's what I've done, but I don't need these two. And if you need to hide them, you do control H. And if you need to see them, you do control H again. But, uh, if you have the lines hidden, it hides a lot of other stuff, so you're better off to leave it on until you're just looking at the header, unless you don't really need them, don't need the other things. But um, at this point, like I said, we are on the color correction, so we don't need it. And it's better off if we see the whole thing. Um, actually, no, we do need it. Never mind me. What we're going to do is we're going to get the guides up there. We're going to make the brush tool about this big. And because I like to give it a center lighting effect on most of my headers. And what I do is I click down here below, hold shift, and I click about here. And I didn't make it the brush tool big enough. That's uh, about the size. Click the bottom and then shift, click over here. That's the effect on now, instead of messing with making it the same on that side, what I do is I just do Control J, duplicate it, then I can do flip horizontal, and it's identical. Now what I'm going to do, is I'm going to merge the layers, and I'm just going to mess with the opacity again, the opacity and fill. And then at this point, I'm gonna add a light on the top. I like to 
go about this big, and then I'm going to go white. And let's go a bit bigger. Let's use our center point. Okay. And now I've got our center light. And mess with the fill and opacity on it as well. We want it to basically be not really able to tell it's there as off as easily. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to adjustments. And we're going to mess with the brightness and contrast a bit. And we're going to mess with our herbs a bit. I'm not I'm not the best with color corrections. I'm still learning, but I still prefer to make my own than use them out of a texture pack, for instance. Let's lower down the red and that a bit, see what it looks like. It goes to blue. Duh. I should know that. <laughs> Let's lower the green. Yeah. Lower the green a little bit there. And let's bring up the blue. Okay. And then we're going to quickly add some vibrance and add some saturation. And then add a little bit of exposure. And I go about 0.10. I always do negative offset if I do any at all. And 26 is okay, and then a little bit of gamma correction. That was a little too much. Alright. Okay. And then it looks like, I'm pretty sure that's good to me. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to highlight the top exposure. Highlight the darkness group. And I'm going to call it CC. And just, I like to turn it off and turn it back on and see the difference a couple times. I like how that looks. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight um, all three. Actually, I'm just going to highlight all in CC. And that's going to stay on top. Then I'm going to group it and it's going to be called Final. I'm going to hold alt, drag down, and then I'm going to go to merge group for the top one. If you made the mistake, you can still control Z to get it all back. Normally you'd make saves during this, but since it was really simple, I just said screw it, I'll just do it this way. Now at this point, what you're going to do is you're going to do press C for the crop tool, and you're going to just press enter, and it'll get rid of all the stuff on the outside. So now, if I hide this, bottom one, I do control C, it's just this. Escape to cancel that. And now, how I save them, well, first of all, oops, I'm going, usually you can do control shift S, but because I do have relay, relive on for playing games like COD, um, I can't do that. So you do save as, and I'm gonna just keep this in my templates Older for projects. I am an organization freak at times, and <laughs> this is just gonna stay in my templates. It's gonna be sore tutorial. I probably spelled that wrong, but it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna put today's date: 7 22 19. That's how I save mine in the format I do, because. This is, since this is my template, my background, the black square and the guides are my actual template. I don't do save because then it will just copy over my template I already have. Okay, and now because we want to use this, I'm going to do control C on that one. I'm going to go to file, new. And then it will have this in the clipboard, the size, well, the dimensions of the header currently. And we're going to do Control V to paste it. Click the lock, and then we delete it. Delete the bottom layer. It doesn't matter what tool you have open right now, because all we're doing is we're in this new, new one to save it, and then it does to export it, and then it'll be a smaller file size. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to export, save for web, and I will if, just go ahead and copy my settings. It looks like my Photoshop is gonna crash, it does this. Okay guys, I know I did end up cutting that short. Basically, I ended up trying to explain why it kept crashing and there was no point in it. Basically, I'm gonna have my export settings on screen now. Yes, the colors are different, but that's because this is for a different project. But the export settings are going to be pretty much the same. The only difference is gonna be the dimensions. The dimensions in this image is 1000 by 1000. The image that you'll be exporting is 3000 by 1000. And you will just want to reduce it by 50% and that's the only dis that's the only changes you're gonna to want to make to the export settings. Here they are on screen and I'm also going to be laying them out in the description if you want them there. Hope you guys did enjoy and you have a nice day.